looks like Heaven is having a little issue joining there. Heaven, you can call in on um, on your phone as well and join in. That's how I always do it. Well, okay. Well, Miss Kenya. Uh, yes. Have we met before? Um, did we? I don't know. I, I've seen you um, attend most of the Zoom sessions. Yes. Yeah, I, I try to absorb as much as I possibly can. Um, so what is it that I can answer for you? Okay. Uh, I want to learn how to trade on trading view, like trade live okay. on trading view. Okay. Are you on trading view at all right now? Yes, I have my laptop. Okay. Okay. Do you have an account on trading view? Yes. Okay. Do you have a broker on trading view? Yes, I have a broker on trading view. Okay. So what is it that what what is the next step on trading view that you need help with? Okay, I need to learn how to set up a stop loss, a buy okay. stop or a buy sell or a sell okay. stop. Did okay. I say that right? Yeah. Yeah, you're saying that right? Yeah, and um how to enter a trade how to okay. exit the trade okay. on trading view. Okay. Who is your broker? Oanda. Oanda. Okay. So I don't use Oanda, but I use forex.com. And I think it's pretty similar, okay? Okay. So let me let me hop into a chart real quick. I'm going to share my screen with you, okay? Okay. Uh oh, looks like I got some people waiting here. I had people trying to join. I didn't know that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. Can you see my screen? Yes. Let's try it again. Oh, oh no, wait, I can see you. You can see me. Yeah, I see your screen now. You see my screen, okay. So this is, is this what your trading view looks like as well? well hold on, let me pull it up really quick. Okay. Well, mine's right now. No, I'm on the front. I'm on the front page of it where it has like the um everything. market summary. Yeah. Hey Jeff. Hi. Is a minute. Right. Hello. I've got some audio problems. Hi. Hello. Okay. So this is, for everybody that just came in, we're, um, there we go. For everybody that just came in, we are going over uh, how to trade, how to make a basic trade on TradingView. Um, let me get a clear chart for you guys here. So um, right now, Kenya use, is using Awanda. I actually use um, TradingView. I'm not trading you. I'm sorry. I use forex.com. Um, and all I do is I, is I find the currency pair that I want to trade. And then I come uh, right up here. And this is sell. And this is buy. Okay. So we'll just run through this. Is everybody following? Is everybody ready? Yeah, well, hold on. I'm trying to pull it up on my screen so I can um, be okay. in the same place where you Evan's are. Ready. Okay. 
So here we go. We're going to hit. Okay. So let's just pretend like we like we did our market research here and we say we're going to sell. OK, so we come right up here to sell. Mm -hmm. um, first thing, let's make sure we're on the right chart. So if you're using I'm using Forex.com, I have to be on a Forex.com chart, which is right here. OK, yeah, I have Forex.com clicked. If you're not on Forex.com, you need to go to whoever your chart person is um, well, for you. Kenya, it would be Oanda here. Well, how do I get to that part right there where you are now? Okay. So do you know how to get into a chart? Yeah, I'm into a chart right now. Okay, so right up here in the top left-hand corner, you're going to type in whatever currency pair you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. What, cur what currency pair do you have up there? This is USDCHF, which is... Um, it, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, just make sure you're going to go with Awanda, okay? Okay. I'm using Forex.com. You're going to use Awanda. Well, how do I get to the Awanda? Oh, okay. I see right you here. Should you should Yeah. Okay. Is, for, is Forex.com better than Awanda? No. In fact, I think Awanda is probably better than Forex.com. Uh, Awanda mm -hmm. will show you volume trades. I'm actually really seriously thinking about switching brokers. Um, I do like with uh, FXCM, Awanda, and Forex.com, and a couple others, you can trade right here on TradingView. Um, I think I'm one of the only traders that actually does that, but it's, it's very convenient for me. So I like to trade right here on TradingView. Um, you can also do it from your phone or, or uh, you know, directly with your broker. Um, but I, I like to trade right here. But yeah, you have too. to be on your broker's chart. So mine is forex.com, and that's what I'm going to go into. Yours is Awanda. You just you just hop into the Awanda chart. Okay, so do I have to do this every single time I log in? I mean, every single, single uh, time. I... Well, let's. Okay, look. So this is your Awanda chart right here, right? Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay. Yes. So what you can do and what most people do, I'm going to go to Forex right up here. You have a watch list. Okay. And you can build out your quick view charts. These are all my quick view charts. And you just add Awanda specific charts up here in the corner. And um, that way, when you're, when you're browsing your charts, you don't have to go through and choose Awanda charts every time you can just grab them from right here. Okay. From the watch list. Uh -huh. And how do I put it on the watch list? How do you put it on the watch list? Okay, mm -hmm. so when you first open your watch list, it's right here in the top right-hand corner. Uh, you're going to have a bunch of different stuff in here. You're going to have stocks in here. You're going to have like indices and all kinds of stuff in here. And you just hit X to take everything out that's in there, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then right here, we hit Add Symbol, and it's going to take you into... Uh, the you know the section to choose you're going to hit forex for your forex charts and uh you're going to type in your currency pair we'll just do euro usd okay mm -hmm. uh right here you're gonna it's gonna say awanda and you're gonna hit the plus button and that's gonna bring it up and put it onto your uh watch list in the top right hand corner and you okay, just go through and add all the charts that you want if you're first starting trading forex i, I really recommend staying with the uh, major and minor pairs um, do you know what the major and minor pairs are? Yeah. Um, so they're okay. like, they're not the exotic, right? Exotic is the opposite. Right. Like the... So, so the majors are anything with the U S dollar. I think there's seven of them. Um, so the Euro U S dollar is a major. Okay. Uh, okay. and then any, and then when they cross over, um, they're the minors. So when like the Euro trades with the GBP, it's a minor, um, so stick with the stick with the majors really specifically. They're they're just very steady charts for the most part. And then if you want to play around uh, again, you know you can play with the minors. I recommend staying away from exotics for now. It's just my opinion. Okay. So yeah, just go through and uh, just hit the plus button. Add these charts. You'll start building a list. Uh, you can just drag them up. You just you can just click it and drag it up and down. I put mine in alphabetical order so that when I'm you know, when I'm on the Aussie charts, I have all the Aussie charts here. When I'm the, on the United States uh, charts, I have all the United States charts here. And that's not all of those charts. These are just the charts I'm choosing to trade. There's a, a lot of charts. So just choose the ones you want. Build a quick list here. And then when you start going through and looking to trade, you know, you can just hit these real quick. 
and uh, and you'll always be on on an Awanda chart. You don't have to worry about searching all the time. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. All right. So I'm on the U.S. CAD here. Okay. U.S. CAD or so, U.S. Oh, wait. I'm oh, on the hold U.S. On. CAD. Okay. Let me see if I can find the U.S. CAD. Okay, and then I just clicked the one with Awanda. All right, yes. so, okay, I have it. Okay. So my chart doesn't look like that. Let's How do I make see my... What does your chart look like? Let's look at your page, okay? Let me let me yeah. stop my screen share, and I'm gonna let oh, you wait. screen share, okay? But I, I'm not, like, I can't share it because I'm on the phone with you, but on the laptop. Okay, well, I tell you what, let's just pull up an Oanda chart and see what it looks like. Okay, so on the Oanda chart, oh, you're on your phone? No, I'm on my laptop, but I'm talking to you from oh, the phone. Okay. I'm at the Zoom meeting on the phone, but I'm looking at the laptop. I'm talking to you. Okay. And my screen is white in the background. And then, okay. I don't know, is that like a whole year or something? Like, how do I make, get that much of it? Okay, let's, let's, let's back up just a smidge then, okay? Um, my mentor, actually, Jeff is here. He used dark screens because they're easier on the eyes. And it turns out he was right. Uh, right here, if you click the top left hand corner, you get the drop down menu right here. It says dark color theme. Uh, I keep all my charts okay. on the uh, dark color theme. All right, so I have that now, but it still doesn't look the same. Yours so look I'm on the one hour chart. Uh, right up here oh, okay. in the top, right okay, beside your currency minute. pair. There you go. I'm on the one hour chart. The one hour. Are we on the same mm -hmm. thing, US dollar and Canadian dollar? Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm on. Okay. I'm on a one hour chart, and my, my chart looks different from yours. Okay. I'm also on Heikinashi candles right here. You may be on regular candles. What What is your. Uh, Right here in the middle, what, 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 um, oh gosh, what is they even called? What type of candle are you looking at? Hi, Kanashi. Okay. Uh, so can, I was going to say, the only thing you can really do is point your phone at your computer if you want me to see it and, and try um, to help you. Oh, you mean with the camera? Uh-huh. Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't even know how to do that. Um, okay. I think the problem is like mine is more like a shorter screen and yours is like a bigger screen, a fuller screen, maybe. I don't know. I'm sorry without seeing it. I'm not I'm not gonna be able to help you a whole lot right there. I don't I don't know exactly what's going on. Um when you get when you jump in on the Zoom calls, it's really best to jump in with the device that you're using. That way we can screen share. You're gonna get you're going to be able to get a whole lot more help if, if you're able to do screen shares. Okay, so I could probably do that then now. Let me see. Yeah, just, just, you can just uh, hang up with your phone if you want to and just use the same link through Facebook and um, hop back in. Okay. I'm trying to do that right now. All right, here we go. Okay. Okay, so um, should I cut you off for this? Okay, I'm gonna stop my screen share and in the bottom of your screen, there's gonna be a green uh, square with an arrow and it's gonna say screen, uh, share screen. If you'll click that, that's gonna pull you up and everybody's gonna be able to see your screen. So I... Uh... Hello, Miss Tracy. Okay. Hello, Donton. Can you do me a favor? I'm having some teeth yes, issues with my um I'm having to listen to you on my phone, but I'm also mm -hmm. gonna um need you to let me in on my computer as oh, well. Okay. So I'm gonna do that now on my computer because I'm I have to see the screen on my computer, but yet. 
um, yeah, can only absolutely. hear you on my phone. So I'm going to do that yeah, now. Absolutely. Thank okay. you, Tom. Uh, You're welcome. Okay, so, so look over here, way over here on the right side in the top right, it says publish. Oh, no, never mind. I'm sorry. You're fine. Go ahead. So is this an Awanda chart you're on right now? Yes. Okay. So you see in the top left-hand corner, uh, it says USD CAD, correct? Mm -hmm. And then right down below that, you have a red square that says 1.23395. Yes. Okay. That, that's your sell button. And to the right of that, the blue button is your buy button. Oh, okay. Okay. In the middle of that is the spread. And, and, and what the spread is, is that's how many pips it's going to cost you to get into the trade. Okay. Um, what, do, what does that ahead. mean? Okay. So that's how brokers collect their money. So we don't, we don't pay brokers by the month, right? Uh, they, they let us in for free pretty much. But what they do is they take money off of every trade and they base that on volume. So right now, if you were going to enter the trade and let's say, you know, you, ha you have your plan to get in the trade and you think the trade is going to move 30 pips. Well, they're going to charge you 4.5 pips to take that trade. It's called the spread. And that's oh. with every broker. That's just what it is. So you have to overcome the spread before you start making money. So every time you enter the trade, you're going to be down by however many pips are in, the, are in between those two symbols up there. So always check the trade. I mean, always check what the spread is because sometimes the spread is very high and you don't want to enter trades. Um, uh, spreads are based on volume. So when the market's moving really, really fast, the spread just skyrockets. Um, it's it's kind of how you can tell how volatile the market is really, but always check, always check your spread. Um, so if you wanted to enter a sell trade, you would just click uh, that red square there. There you go. Click that. Mm -hmm. oh. and yeah, now what? see that put you that put you directly into the trade. That is not how Forex.com works. Click on the over here where you've got the red line with the zero 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 US dollars. Will you click that and see what that brings up? Mm -hmm. Click on it. Yeah, click on it. Click on the negative one to the left of it. There we go. This is what we're looking for. So right up here, we have take profit and we have stop loss, okay? Um, so if you click on stop loss right there. Um, okay. So th this is going to protect your position. So if you if you want to, uh, you know, be 10 pips above or 15 pips above, you know, 25 pips above, this is where you would set um, that that stop loss. Uh, same thing with the take profit. You can you can set your take profit right here. And um, me, but how do I like right now? If we if I were to enter a trade, mm -hmm. what should I put in those boxes? Well, that is your trading strategy. That's that's something you have to kind of develop. That's, I mean, that's that's a different call. Um, if we filled out if we filled out everybody's basic questions here, we can go into strategy if you'd like. Um, but that's that's based on a, on a lot of different things. Uh, kind of rule of thumb: if you're trading on the 15 minute chart, is about 10 pips. Um, I would not use that as a blanket statement at all whatsoever, but that's a pretty good average for a 15 minute chart, in my opinion. So if I'm only going for 15 minutes, I should only do 10 pips. That's rule of thumb. That is not um, across the board. Um, so really what we need to do is, is like you need to write that question down and then me and you can do a training uh, a, a strategy a strategy session together and we can go over really quickly and uh, or clearly uh where to set stop losses at which it's it's not difficult to do it's not difficult to determine um but that, that's kind of a, a different call um i tell you what if i 
I want to I want to make sure nobody else, else has any basic questions before we move into any sort of strategy questions. Um, do you have any other questions about the use, using trading view right here? Me? Yes. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just want to know, like, what do I need to do to enter into a trade? Okay, so at this point, you are you are in a trade. Uh, so my um, Forex.com is not the same as Awanda. Forex.com asked me, um, Forex.com asked me um, if I want to get in a trade before it just launches me into a trade. Um, this one just kind of drops you right in. Although nothing's moving, I would, I, I, I got to say, I've, I've never used this before and it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. I'm not, I'm not quite sure exactly uh, what we're doing here. If you hit the X in the top right hand corner and close out, um, close out this this box, yeah, right there. Uh huh. And then we're right here in the middle where that red box is, where it says 0, 0.00 USD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just hit the X there. Hit the X there and see what that does. Okay, so I don't actually know if we were ever <laughs> actually in a trade or not. Um, what I'd like to do is pop you over to my screen and show you how Forex.com works. Um, okay. And then I would have to do a little bit of research on Awanda. Um, it felt similar, but it definitely wasn't the same. Um, hold on just a second. Let me, sh let me show you my screen, okay? Okay. And I'm just going to enter a trade. I'm going to enter a real small trade here which I'm, I'm going to lose, obviously, but I'm just going to show you guys how this works, okay? So I come up here. I, I click Forex.com, so it's only, I only get showed Forex.com charts. I come here, and I go into my Forex.com chart, okay? Uh, right here, the spread is 13.7, which is ridiculous. No way I would ever enter this trade at 13. In fact, we're not going to enter this trade at 13.7. Um, we're, we're not going to we're not gonna teach them that that's okay. Let's go to something else. It's got a lot lower spread. This spread here is 6.7. I can feel I can feel Jeff laughing. 24. Nine. Good lord, these spreads are horrible. Guys, we're looking for like a 2.3 spread or like a three spread. This nine, twelve, six. Here's a three point six. That's that's a little more doable here. So these, if you're going for ten never... pips, if you're going for ten pips and they're asking for nine, that means you only get one. Yeah, yeah. That means on the ten pip trade, you'd only be getting one trade. So you definitely have to watch the spread. Please, please watch the spread. Okay, so Jeff is saying the spreads were high because Sydney just opened. Um, okay, so uh, here we go. So let's say I think this is going to sell, okay, which it kind of looks that way on, anyways, honestly. Uh, we'll go to the 15-minute chart. It doesn't really make any difference. Shit. Oh, this looks better here. Okay, so I would just hit sell right here, okay? It's going to bring up um my my trading area here oh, so all right so right here this says 20,000 units right uh and and you might be asking yourself how much is that worth per pip right and all you got to do is look right down here and it says pip value pip value is 1.81 dollars okay so every pip is worth almost two bucks for me if that's scary all you got to do is drop your lot size down and this is going to trade accordingly now Every pip is worth nine cents. And we can drop it down again. And every pip will be worth nine cents. I'm going to enter the trade like this, okay? So this is a sell. Uh, for my quantity is 1,000 units. That's nine cents uh, per pip. And I'm going to hit sell. And that dumps me into the trade, okay? So I've got to overcome three pips, which automatically puts me down 28 cents. Does that make sense? Did I lose you?
Hello? Yes, ma'am. There we go. Okay. Um, so do you trade percents? Right do I trade percents? Yeah, percents. Like instead of dollars. I you're referring to. No, I trade, I trade uh, currency. Uh, that is that is rated in pips, but uh, everything I do is based around this is counting. This is actually 27 cents right here. Okay, so no, everything I do is based on the actual currency that I'm trading, not the percent okay. of the account. Now, when I'm taking a trade, like if I was sizing this up, you know, if I was going through here uh, with all of my tools and I was, uh, you know, sizing up this trade here, you know, I, I would I would look at this and then I would come in here with my, uh, you know, my profit and loss here. That's the wrong one, that's upside down. Forgive me for that, give me just a second. Here we go short. When I come in here and I'm sizing up my trade and, and setting my, my stop loss, um, I would look and see what percentage of my account I was trading, you know what I mean? What is going on? Oh. Uh, but but when I'm actually following the trade, I'm following the actual currency value of the trade. It's driving me crazy. Um, so how do you know where to set that up? How do I know how to set what up? Um, that whatever that is. Okay, let's do this. So right now, it cost me three pips to get in, which cost me twenty eight cents because each pip was worth nine cents. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to protect my position. You always have to protect your position if you don't want to blow your account. And that's done through stop losses, okay? So this is going to default me at 25 pips, which is, so we'll just enter the trade here. It's going to, I got a, I got a green flag here and it put my stop loss on the screen, right? And all I got to do right now, if I wanted to move my stop loss up just a hair, I just grab it and pull it up like this. And it tells me that's 50 pips, that's the price point, modify, and it moves my stop loss. And it's just a drag and drop stop loss. If I want to move it back down, I just pull it down. It tells me that's 35.9 pips, modify. Um, same thing, if I think the market is going to drop down to here, this is my take profit, right? Mm -hmm. I just come here, I set my take profit. It's going to default it at 75 pips. Um, we're going to have, there we go. I would just grab my take profit. I would drag it down to where I think the take profit should be. It tells me that's 128 pips. I modify. And it's as easy as that. If the trade goes up, it's going to get me out here to protect my account. If the trade goes down, it's going to um, take me out of the trade here to secure my um, earnings. And it's, it's as easy as that. And you can continuously move your stop loss down. Yep. As you can do as much as you want. Yeah, there's even a, a trailing stop loss. Uh, I don't see that here. I'd have to look up exactly how to do that. But you can you can do a trailing stop loss uh, where the stop loss will just will just follow down like stay ten pips behind uh, the current trading zone. Um, I, yeah. I would have to look that up. Maybe we can do that on another call, but but that's really, that's a good way to do it. I I tend to be a scalper. So I, when I'm on the market, I watch the market constantly. So this never gets away from me. It never gets out of hand. I'm always right on top of these trades. Um, so this is this is really straightforward. This is why I use Forex.com. Uh, do you have any questions about this? No. Okay. Do you have any other questions about TradingView? Um, yeah, what does the sell stop and the buy stop mean? Um, so, so there's a couple different ways to do this. There's so this is the stop loss and the and the take and the take profit. Uh, there's another there's another thing where you can set the computer or set the market to automatically enter the trade at a certain point. Um, you know what, I might actually do good on this. So, so we're gonna we're gonna leave this here. Maybe I can overcome that that stop loss here. Let's go here. Um, 
so right here, um, gosh, what am I doing? I lost track. Okay, so if we were going to sell again, um, we could set right here when we wanted to enter the market. So if I said, man, when the market gets right here, I want to enter 169385, I could come up here and hit 169385. That would be a pending order. Um, and I would hit sell. And when the market got to this point, it would uh, enter, enter the market for me. Same thing with, with the stop right here. Uh, it would do the same thing. So this is kind of like a this will enter the market for you at set times if you don't want to enter right now. Uh, and that's what the, I, I do believe that's what the, the sell the, or the stop is that you were talking about. Um, mm -hmm. I don't do that much. Um, I really like, I'm kind of a hands-on trader and uh, I usually trade on the 15 minute chart in, in the, in the five minute chart. So I, like I said, I've, I usually do the drag, the drag stuff, uh, like I showed you before. Okay. Does yes. that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Other question. Go ahead. Like, how do you set up the indicators and that thing that you put up the the red and green screen? How do I set up indicators? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just start at the left, okay? Right here um, is your currency pair, right? Right here is your time frames, okay? Mm -hmm. And I have my time frames um, with the stars next to it. If you take off the star, you see how it moves up top? So this, if you hit the star, it adds the time frame up here so you don't have to do the drop down menu every time, okay? Okay. Same thing here. I've got Heikinashi candles, regular candles in the line graph, and those are starred here. If I wanted to add anything else, I would just add a star and it would add it to my menu up top. Okay. Mm. So we, we come here to strategies. These are all the strategies. Uh, you just type in the first letter of, uh, or the first couple letters of what you're looking for. Whatever strategy it is that you want, you just put a star next to it. Okay. And then that strategy will be right here in your quick select strategy menu. Uh, it'll be up to you to, de to determine which indicators you want to use in your strategy. But all you have to do is come in and, and search. Those are my favorites uh, right here, the built-ins. Any of these, you're more than welcome to use. You just find the ones that you like. None of them are wrong. Uh, the, the, every, everybody, everybody uses these for a reason. So you, you just, you know, do strategy sessions uh, with your mentor, which is can be uh, Jeff or I or Tom or anyone else, and um, you can start learning uh, strategy. Okay. So yeah, just put a put a star next to it. Um, yeah, that's it there. And then these are the these are the tools over here. These are all your lines. These are all your measurements. This is for writing. This is for uh, or no, this is for drawing. This is for putting text on the screen. These are like uh, Fibonacci patterns. These are yeah. There you go. Prediction and measurement tools. These are all sorts of little you know little stickers you can put on there and and drag around you know to keep track of what you're doing on your chart. And how do you align um, this is it? The, how do I align what? Um, not, not the ruler. The uh -huh. second button up from the ruler. This one? No. This one? Yes. Okay. This right here is is full of all our sorts of tools. Um, which one of these tools were you asking about? Either the long position or the short position. Okay. So long position is up. Short position is down. Okay. And what these tools do is they, they tell you your risk to reward ratio. So let's say this is a sell market, okay? So we would just put, we were gonna enter here, this would be our short position, okay? We drag this down to where we're, our take profit is. We take this to where our stop loss is. And then it tells us you got a two, booger, 
tells you you got a 2.67 risk to reward ratio. A lot of people have rule of thumbs like I won't enter it for less than three to one or I won't enter it for less than four to one. You know what I mean? Um, so this tells you like, oh, man, what's my risk reward? Well, this is 2.67 to one. Um, you know, if your risk reward is four to one, you're not going to enter that trade. Uh, so that that helps you set up your. Um, um, your risk management. Does that make okay, sense? So so with this one, you align the top with the um, stop loss mm -hmm. and the bottom with yeah. take profit. That's right. Let's do it again, okay? So this is where the market's at. Let's say I'm going to enter right here, and it's a sell. We're going to say it's going down, right? So I would just come mm -hmm. right up here. I would hit short position. I put it right on where I'm entering. I drag the bottom to my take profit. I take the top to my stop loss and it automatically calculates my risk to reward ratio. So the, the cool thing about this is you're like, man, where should I set my stop loss? You know, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the take profit is going to be here, but I don't know where to set my stop loss. I know that, you know, my mentor told me I have to have a three to one ratio. Well, you're going to take this down to where it says three to one. Okay. Well then your stop loss has to be right there for a three to one risk to reward ratio. Does that make sense? Wait a minute. Let me see that again. Okay, so let's say you set this up and it just defaults like this, right? And you know that your take profit is here. You know that the market's gonna go down here, right? This is where your take profit is right here, okay? And this says you've got a 1.75 risk to reward ratio. And you're asking yourself, where do I put my stop loss, right? And you don't know where to put your stop loss, but you know that you, you don't enter trades for less than a three to one risk reward ratio, right? Yes. Let's say that's what your strategy says. Well, right now you're at a 1.75 risk to reward ratio right here. Okay. So all you would do is come up here and grab this and pull it down. You see how the risk reward ratio is changing? We would pull mm -hmm. it down to where it says three, which would be three to one. So for a three to one risk to reward ratio, you would have to set your stop loss here. And then you would know exactly what your risk to reward ratio was. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's one way to, you know, set a stop loss, um, um, you know, if it's going to be determined by your risk to reward ratio. You have any other questions about this tool? No. Okay. Do you have any other questions about trading view? Um, not at the moment. Okay. I'm gonna practice if this. You think, okay. Does anyone else have any questions about trading view that they would like to ask? No, not at the moment, um, Donton. I just came to listen to what you were saying, but I think it's pretty much covered. Um, yeah, really yeah. Um, um, so what I broker what, is this that you're using? Uh, I use Forex.com, which I'm okay. I'm eighty percent happy with. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep them as a broker, but I'm gonna grab a secondary broker because they. I'm going to shop around a little bit. Their usability is, is spot on, but mm -hmm. their features are kind of lacking and their spreads are not great. So, well, the spreads are they're kind of competitive, but, but there they're, they're are better spreads. Okay. Are they American-based, um, then, this trader? They are. They, they, they are the broker. Walmart of, of brokers. They're very safe. Okay. All they're right. very, very regulated. Okay, as long as you're comfortable with it, I guess, you know, which you seem to yes. be. Yeah. I am, I am. Yeah. I'm going to be doing some real trading tomorrow, because you sent me a message, didn't you? Remember about last week, did you? You sent me a message, was it you, Donton, or Kerry, that sent me a message? I don't know, I'm sorry, I, I talked to a lot of people. 
I think um, you wanted to do a Zoom on Friday. Was it you? I can't even remember. It's quite a few I'm people. Sorry, said. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, um, I think it was. I can't even remember. I've had a lot of messages as well, but I think it was. Hold on. Let me have a look. I think it was you. I'm not sure. Let me check. Well, anyways. I tell you. Well, it's yeah, okay. it was I'm, you. I'm glad you're here. It was me. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was you. Yeah, yeah. You sent me a message. Um, but ne never mind. I think you probably haven't seen the last message anyway. Pick it up later. While we're in here, guys, I'll just show you a couple more things, okay? Just for fun. So mm. if we're, if we're, you know, if you see how you keep zooming in like this and zooming out like this, and I'm just rolling the, you know, the little roller on my mouse to zoom in and out, and it's automatically adjusting the screen. If I really wanted to zoom in close here and, and it was being, you know, silly for me, what you can do is you can come over here and, and manually stretch and shrink this chart, okay? So if I wanted to get, and then you can you can drag it. And then if I really wanted to get in here close and really take a peek at this, you know, I could stretch these pips way out. You know what I mean? Uh, and then, or if I wanted to, you know, uh, go backwards on the chart, you know, and look way back here, you know, and, and maybe do some back testing or something, you can drag the chart like this. You can go up and down. I believe you can even stretch the times out too. So yeah, you can you can manipulate this chart in all different ways, okay? And let's say you get this chart all screwed up and you don't know, you can't even remember what a Forex chart looks like anymore because you've got it so messed up. All you gotta do is click auto and it'll take it back to, to the stock position. And this arrow right here will take you to the beginning of the chart. So we're on auto and we're at the front of the chart. Does that make sense? Yes. So drag up and down, drag time, move the chart, and then when you're ready to go back, you just click auto and it takes you back uh, to a regular chart. Um, this tool right here, the magnet, if you're setting, let's say you're setting uh, this guy right here, right? And you've got to set him at the tops and the bottoms. This goes at the tops and bottoms of candles, right? But you can't, you can't quite get it right on the candles. You click this magnet right here. And what this magnet does is it, 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 it makes the line go over the candles, over the peaks of the candles. You see how it, it sucks it on like that? So you know that you're at the top or the bottom of a candle when you turn the magnet on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's what the magnet does. Um, if you're drawing lines on a chart, you got to click it every time you draw a line. You got to come down here and re-click. You got to come down here and re-click unless you click this button right here. And then you can draw as many lines as you want as long as this button right here is clicked, okay? If not, it resets every time. And of course, this is um, this button right here will lock all of these lines or, or whatever you have on here. It will lock all of these so that they can't accidentally be erased. Um, and this right here hides all of your drawings and gives you a naked chart. And when you're done, delete, deletes everything off. Um, this guy right here gives you all the symbols and the symbols are great. You think you'll remember stuff on a chart and you, and you won't. So, you know, if you think the market's going down here, you know, give it an arrow, um, wow. or, or, you know, whatever speaks to you. Uh, you can do whatever you want with it, and uh, you know you can make it big or small. Um, you can uh, change the color of it. You know, red for down, green for up. Um, really personalize the chart. You know, play with it and learn it, and make it your own. It, it's going to help you understand what's going on. Um, if you're setting, if you're setting something like this, right? And you're like, man, I just can't tell if that's quite right on there. You click the magnifying glass and you zoom in and then you can see exactly where this is. That's what the magnifying glass is for. Click the magnifying glass and go here. 
we can zoom in and see exactly what's going on over here. Okay. And again, we can change the color of this. If you don't like it purple, change it to green, change it to blue, whatever speaks to you. Um, get your colors the way you want them. Um, if you're going to enter a trade, you know, let's say uh, you analyzed your charts and uh, the market was going to drop to here and you were going to set your stop loss here and you don't know quite know how many pips that is, which the pip is the fourth number back. So this, this is our pip count right here, okay? Uh, you would just come here to the tape measure, click and drag, All right? So that's 52 pips, okay, 52.8 pips. Right here, our stop loss would be 27 pips, okay? The total between these two lines is 81 pips, okay? Um, it does the same thing with bars. If they said, man, how many bars has it been since the price dropped? You just drag back and it tells you here 33 bars, okay? And that was two pips up and down right there. Text, you just click on, you click anywhere and it brings up text. Just type whatever you want and it goes directly on the screen. You can change uh, the color of the text um, and it just shows up right here on the screen. Uh, make notes, guys. You know, you can type market high here or I think it's going to drop here or whatever you want. Um, but make notes, mark up your charts. Um, these are drawing tools. I use the highlighter quite a bit. I like it. Um, to highlight uh, something that the market did. I'll put a little pop above it with the highlighter. Um, this one right here, it gets used a lot when you're, when you're doing consolidation. The rectangle inside of here is what people use to put the box around consolidation. Um, and right here, you can see I marked the triangle on it. So all of my favorite tools are down here. Anytime you mark a triangle, it goes onto your favorites bar, okay? And now that's in the wrong spot, but I, I can drag that back to the front. There we go. And this can be dragged anywhere on the screen, so it's not uh, in your way. I just keep mine down there in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, these are Fibonacci tools. If you don't know Fibonacci, uh, definitely look into it. Uh, do a strategy session with it. Fibonacci is amazing. Uh, when you first join IM, this is the pitchfork. Um, and the fib retracement, of course, is, you know, one of the, <laughs> one of the big boy, uh, you know, uh, tools, Fibonacci tools. If you don't know how to use it, definitely do a strategy session and get it learned. And then these are all of your lines. Um, I just use, I just use a couple different lines. I'm on the phone, baby. Give me just a second, okay? Thank you. Yeah, so that's it. Um, one thing I do have is countdown to bar close. I think that's really cool. Um, you know, I'm on the 15-minute chart. This bar right here is the active bar. It's a 15-minute bar. There's one minute and 36, 34 seconds left in that bar. You have to turn that on. And that's right here, countdown to bar close. Um, if you don't like all this stuff being on the right side, you can move it to the left. So it's over here. If you want the right side to be clean and you want all your tools on one side, you can move this back and forth. Um, that's really about it, guys. That's that's trading view in a nutshell. Um, this is our watch list here. Right, and the watch list is cool. Whatever you click on, it's going to tell you, you know, how it's performed, uh, you know, from a week to a year. Uh, it's going to tell you uh, what trading view thinks the market is going to do. Um, right here is all your alarms that are set up, uh, so you can go through them and check them. I don't really use anything else over here. There's a couple cool things, but I don't use them. Um, if you get the upgraded version of trading view, you can do back testing, which is amazing. Um, 
one of the people I learned from, uh, Manny Quinona, is, um, he, he says to back test a lot because when you're learning Forex, you can only, if you're trading live, you can only test your strategy when you're actually trading. But if you back test, you can go back in the market and you can play the market. Like you can say, what do I think would happen here? And then you can play the market and the market will move quickly for you. And you can test your strategy, you know, a 15 second, a 15 minute candle, you know, it just takes one second. So, you know, you go in, you, you learn with your mentor, they teach you a new strategy. Um, you close your eyes. You close your eyes, you go to a random spot on the chart. And then, you know, you, you do your indicators, you know, you do your drawings wherever the market's at and then let it play and see if you predicted the market the right way. It's a super, super, super valuable resource that I don't actually see a lot of people use. Uh, I try to use it quite a bit. It is pretty handy for um, learning how to trade back testing. That's this arrow right here. You cannot use Heiken Asha candles on back testing. You have to use regular candles. All right, guys. That is um, that is trading view for the most part. Does anybody have any questions? No, that's it for now. For now, Danton. Um, thank you for your time. I'm gonna hit off now because it's quite late in London now, so it's okay. bedtime here. <laughs> it's like yeah, ten thirty no now. So I'm gonna hit the set. But thanks for your time. Do you do these You're regularly, welcome. like every week? Do you do I, these? I, I I don't. This is my first one. But uh, if okay. you guys like it, um, we can yeah. we can jump back on and and do it again. You guys want to do yeah. it again? Yeah, definitely. Yes. I'd definitely like to do some um, trading view. I've got some trading view questions, but beforehand, I'm going to look at um, trading view and see what questions I have ready for you. So, if you're going to do another one, okay. yeah, no, this is quite good. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. You're welcome. Well, all I'm right. Glad you like it. Time. Yeah. Thank you. You're Thanks welcome. for your time and good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Yeah. yeah. Does Does anybody have any questions about basic? uh trading strategy um i'm gonna review everything you showed me and afterwards okay. if you do another one another zoom session i would like to attend yes absolutely anytime just uh shoot me a text um you guys are welcome to text me anytime and um uh yeah we can do we can do one-on-one -on -one strategies or we can do another big meeting like this um, okay, that's great. Uh, Miss Barbara, did you get your question? Yeah. Um, okay. Miss Barbara, yeah. did you get your question um, answered? Uh, I'm trying to, to tell you how do we manage the, the number of the stop, stop loss and the profit? How do you manage it? Yes. Uh, well, that's going to depend on your broker. Uh, who is your broker? Oh, okay. And about oh. when, when, okay, if I'm start to trading like nine, 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 I mean nine, nine thirty, right? It depends mm -hmm. on the market, or it depends the broker or can i have something in i'm thinking okay so are, are you asking me how to how to manage a stop loss on the screen or are you asking me how to manage a stop loss in a trade in a trade in a trade okay well that depends on your strategy mm -hmm. um what strategy do you use when you're trading okay Let's let's do this, okay? Do you know what uh, price action is? Sorry. Do you know what price action is? No. Mommy. Okay. So what I would recommend, 
the, the best thing that I have found for learning to step losses to, to, for learning to set stop losses is uh, learning price action. Okay. And price action is done with a naked chart. So we'll just go to Heikinashi here. Okay. Price action is done with a naked chart. And what you do is you find your points of uh, support and you find your points of resistance. Okay. So that's resistance. And this is support. Okay. So that is a high and that is a low on the chart. Okay. So let's go in here. Do you know about trend lines? Ms. Barbara? Oh, okay. Oh, anybody. Do you guys know about trend lines? No. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, my goodness. Um, do you guys want to go, do you guys want me to show you price point and trend lines or, uh, and support and resistance? Do you, do you have that much left, left in your <laughs> attention span or do you, would you sure. guys like to save it for another time? Okay. Um, here we go. So this is called price action, price action. Okay. This is the very, to me, this is like the bones, the foundation of forex like before you do any indicators before you do anything else learn support resistance and trend lines i don't know if you guys are in the im academy but manny quinona is in the im academy is a master of this and he's who i use as a mentor for this so what we do is if, if we're trading on the 15 minute time chart what we're going to do is we're going to go up i'm going to skip the 30 minute i'm going to go to the one hour time chart okay i'm trading on the 15 minute I'm going up one time frame, okay? Can you show so your screen going up, me, please? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I thought I was. Hold on just Thank a second. You. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So if we're trading, I'm going to go, I'm going to do a naked chart here. Okay, so I'm on Heikinashi. I'm on the 15-minute time frame, okay? You guys stop me with any questions here. I'm going to kind of blow through this, okay? So price point is support and resistance. The market is not random, guys. The market, when it when it goes to some place, it goes to that place again. Okay, um, so support is the highest it's gone. Resist no support is the lowest it's gone. Resistance is the highest it's gone. So on the 15 minute time frame, can we agree that this is the high and this is the low? Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my horizontal ray. I'm going to click the high, which is my resistance. And I'm going to click the low, which is my support. If you do this, I want you to, to decide on a color and a shape of a line. My support and resistance is always the hot pink or hot purple, skinny, solid line. Do you have to, you have to do your forex chart like, uh, like a legend of a map? have certain colors and certain shapes and certain lines for certain things so that you don't get confused. So my support and resistance, again, is this hot pink skinny line. Um, so I'm going to hop out to the one hour time frame and I'm going to look and see, has the market ever respected this line before? And I'm going to look back. Look right here. You can't make this up. Look at that right there. It cut right through there. You see the market has been there and it went there again. Look here, it hit it again. It did consolidation on it here. Look right here, it hit it again. It hit it again. Did consolidation on it, it hit it again. You see what I'm talking about? It keeps hitting this line. That means that that is a key level of resistance, okay? So since the market has respected that line, what, like eight times we saw, the market is gonna respect this line again, okay? So now we check the bottom uh, support. It respected the line here. It kind of respected the line here. It made an effort to break through the line here. Look at that, how strong that was. Um, it respected it here, respected it here, respected it there. Again, made a run through it, respected it here, here, here. So you see this isn't random. The market keeps coming back to these points. So I'm going to save this as my support and resistance. This is my major 
support and resistance, okay? And I'm going to go back down to my 15-minute time frame because that's what we're trading. Now I'm going to find minor support and resistance. And I'm going to see what are the levels that the market seems to respect. And I'm going to count. This has been respected one, two, three times. I'm going to keep that. Maybe I'm going to do like four or five of these. I'm going to go up and down. I'm going to search up and down, up and down. Up and down. To me, that feels good. This is definitely one right in here, right? Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. So we're going through here and we're setting support and resistance. We're looking for areas on the chart that have been respected many times. So to me, to me, these are key levels of support and resistance because it seems to be where the market is changing directions, okay? Now, right here, so what the market does, what we look for as traders is for the market to move in a different direction, okay? So what we do, where is my, here we go. So what the market does is it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, right? This is a low, okay? Let's say the market came from like this, okay? So the market came down, it hit a low, and then went up, and then went down. But this low is higher than this low, okay? The next low is higher than the last low. The next low is higher than the last low, okay? This high is lower than this high, is lower than this high. So you see we have this stair step effect, okay? When you get a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, when you get that pattern, that is what makes an uptrend. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so this is what we're looking for in the market. We're looking for uptrends and we're looking for downtrends. So as long as this market stays going like this, this is an uptrend. So we just watch it. If we watch the market, what it's doing. But at some point, the market's going to do this. It's going to pull one of these guys right here. So you see higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high. But look, not a higher low. This is a lower low. And what that has done is that has broke our structure, okay? Um, a break of structure means that the, that the market could be changing, okay? So then we would watch here to see what it did. Either the market would go back up or it would make a lower high like this, right? Okay. And now we see a lower, we see a peak, then we see a lower high, a lower low, I mean, a, I'm sorry, a lower low, a lower high, lower low, lower high. And now we have a downtrend, okay? So Forex is finding uptrends and downtrends. That's the whole thing in Forex. Uptrends, which are higher highs and higher lows, and downtrends, which are lower highs and lower lows. So that's why we find the peak and we find the bottom. So let's go back down here to our chart, okay? We have the peak, we have the bottom, okay? We have a high, we have a low. We have a high, we have a low, right? We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna ignore this right here for a minute. We have a high, we have a low, okay? So this is a down trend, okay? Look here. This is another point of resistance that we marked. We've got a high, low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, but not a higher high. This is a lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So you can see this is an uptrend. This is a downtrend. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we do is we come in here with this little guy right here and we go to our high point right here. 
I'm going to choose this one right here because this is our break of structure. And we come way out here with this and we start going down. We start falling like this until we hit a until we hit a spot. Look here. See how this ray hits both of those lines right there? That means that those two lines are associated. That is a downtrend, okay? I'm gonna oops. I'm gonna keep pulling this in to right here because I actually think that this. So the more times that this line gets hit, the more respectable the line is. Right here, the line got hit twice, right? We got hit here, we got hit here. But if I pull this line down, we get hit one, two, three, four, five, six times, which is a much more respectable line. Keep coming down. Look here, look how that matches up right there. I think our trend line is right here. Now guys, a lot of this is up to our artistic interpretation. And that's what makes a good Forex trader or a bad Forex trader is the interpretation of the charts. This is not the only trend line here. There are multiple trend lines here, but you have to choose the strongest trend line, okay? So what is the point of this line here? Let's go back up here. Take a peek. So now, tell you what, let's see this guy right here. So we did the top here for our downtrend right here. We'll do the same thing. We'll go from our bottom to our top. Pretend like none of this is here, right? We're going to go up right there. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five hits, okay? That is a good trend line, okay? That's our trend line. So what we do, we have higher highs and higher lows. We draw, we draw on here like this, right? Whenever, whenever the market breaks our trend line, the market is breaking our trend, okay? This is where you want to get in on a trade where the trend has been broken. That was the earliest point to get in on a trade, right? So look, this is an uptrend. Well, when is it gonna become a downtrend? Well, we know that the market has respected this line, what, like eight times? So the likelihood that the market is going to bounce off this line is very high. So we see the market bounce off the line, right? But is it gonna go up? And we also see the market bounce off of this line. So this is a bounce and this is a bounce. So the market is bouncing its way up like this. See how it's respecting all of our trend lines? And we didn't, <laughs> the deal is, is that we didn't even mark these lines to look at this trend line, but look how they're all respected. The market came to the bottom, it went up, it bounced off our trend line, bounced off our, I mean, bounced off uh, resistance, bounced off support, bounced off resistance, bounced off support bounced off resistance, bounced off support. And we didn't even plan this out. It just, now it works, right? Bounced off resistance. It should bounce off of our trend line here, like it has been bouncing off this trend line, but it didn't. It broke the trend line. That's a breaking structure. That's a breaking trend. Now it fell because it's looking, it's looking for where it wants to stop. Um, and then when it started going back up, look, it, res it, it respected our support. I mean, it respected our resistance again. It tried to respect our support, respected our resistance again, support, resistance, and then it's breaking support down here. So what we would want to do is when it broke this trend line, you could enter the trade here, depending on your indicators. But what most people do is wait for it to go down, uh, retrace, and then people enter the trade right here. This is a really common trade entry spot. Um, and you would come over here to your Fibonacci retracement and pull it out. And we would see from this high and this low um, that the market is at least going to come down into this section right here. Look how it supported this line right here. Look how it supports this red line right here. Look how it supports this 61% right here. See the 61.8%, look how it sits right on that. 
You can't make this stuff up, guys. Look how it sits right on that 23%. Um, so this is how we tell, how we begin to tell what the market is going to do and how long we want to stay in a trade. So we look, we do support and resistance. We, we kind of start boxing in the trade. We draw our trend line and then wait um, for the candles to break our trend line. So down here, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, so this trend is over. We started on a downtrend. We're just going to do the same thing here. We come up here to the top. We draw a trend line down. We try to find as many points as possible. To me, that's it. Look, we broke right here, right? So now we bounced. We, we broke the trend line. We bounced off of resistance. We're going to come down here and bounce off support. And then what is it going to do? To me, to me, if I had to guess, if I was a betting man, this is going to come down here and bounce and go up. Right? Because it broke our trend, hit our support, it's going to bounce off. I mean, hit our resistance, it's going to bounce off support, and it's going to head up. It's going to look something like, damn, I got this on. Sorry, guys. It's making me crazy. There we go. There we go. To me, it's going to come down. And then it's going to come up to here and down <laughs> and down to here and up to here and down to here and up to here. Because <laughs> that's what it did on the way down. That's what it did on the way up. That's what it did on the way down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's called price action. That's trading without indicators. A lot of people trade strictly, strictly price action. To me, it's funny. Price action people hate indicator people, which is ridiculous. Um, it's stupid. What you should do is combine price action and indicators together. Because you come in here and you do these drawings to see what the market is doing, and then you start adding your indicators to it. The wrong thing. Start adding your indicators to it, like right here, my, my main man here, the DeLorean EMAs. And the DeLorean EMAs tell me exactly what's going on here. You know, they tell me uh, whether my trade is, is, is strong or not strong. Um, you know, uh, DeLoreans are, are really, really... Uh, are a really good indicator here again the ninja cater i don't know if you guys are in the ninja group uh but if you're not you should be you get this indicator for free with the ninjas look here it says up <laughs> up and it went up <laughs> so uh yeah that's that's another really strong indicator that we use so you you combine price action with indicators and you get a really strong trading strategy does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any? Oh, you know what? Thank you. And I'm I gonna tell you. You're welcome. I'm gonna tell you one thing here, okay? And this is where to set stop losses. And this will probably be enough for you for y'all's brains for y'all to absorb this today. But let's say, let's say it broke through and it went up, right? And I'm going to enter the trade right here, okay? This is my entry point. I wish there was a way to, there it is here. Let's, see, let's, let's say I enter the trade right here, okay? This is my entry point. Where do I put my stop loss? Let's say I think the market's going to come all the way down to here. Who cares how far you think it's going to come down? But let's say we think the market's going to come all the way down to here, right? Where do I set my stop loss? That's the question. That's what everybody wants to know, right? What you do is you set your you set your stop loss where the trend is broken, and that's why it's always different. My trend is broken if uh, if I see I've got a higher high. I mean, I've got a I got a high, a lower high, um, a higher low, lower high. If 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 this goes above this, my trend is broken. If this goes above this. My trend is broken. So if I enter the trade here, if the market comes up above this line right here, my trend is broken. 
right? It's no longer a downtrend. So if I enter the trade, you wouldn't, you would enter the trade there. You would enter the trade. You would enter the trade right in here. Like this. And I would set my stop loss right here, right at this level of support. I mean, resistance, because because if the market comes up above this peak right here, I no longer have a, a, a lower low. Now I have a higher high. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so look here. Oh shit, I took all my drawings off. Excuse my friends. Uh, where is my, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, a low point, higher high, lower, higher low, higher high, higher low, right? So if I was gonna, if I got in here, I was, uh, or if I got in here, I would set my stop loss here because if I don't get my higher high, then, then it's broken, it's broken my trend. I hope that, I hope that makes sense, guys. So you just set your stop loss yes. at the last big peak. If I enter the trade here, I'm setting the stop loss here. If I enter the trade here, I'm setting my stop loss here. Uh, if I enter the trade here, I'm setting my stop loss here. Whatever breaks the trend. Um, if I, if I uh, enter the trade here, I'm setting my stop loss here because that's going to break my trend okay uh, if i were to enter this trade here for a buy trade i would set my stop loss here because that would uh break my trend if it, if it did anything different so you're so so you, so the trend set the stop loss that's how i set my stop loss um and that keeps you safe every time because as long as you're in the trend you're in the trade and if the trend breaks then you're out of the trade no problem Okay. Does everybody get it? Yes, I get it. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? No? Okay. Well, guys. I hope that you got a lot out of this. Um, would you guys like to do another session uh, in a week or so? Yes, as soon as okay. possible. So if you want a private session, just message me, okay? We can get together. Uh, if not, I'll try to do a group session in a week. Um, but I want you guys to write down your questions, okay? Um, that way, when we come back to this, you'll really have, you know, it'll be really focused. Um, and then if you guys, if you guys get comfortable with trading view and you want to learn strategy, um, let me know and we can start down the road of strategy, which is where the fun begins. Um, if yes. you want to help me, uh, please go to the Forex uh, for Beginners Facebook page and put in there that we had this session and that you got a lot out of it because that helps me. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Well, then I'm going to let you guys go. If you need anything, uh, shoot me a message on Messenger. If not, I'll get a hold of you in a week. Sound good? Yes. Yes. Awesome, guys. It was nice to see y'all. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Don. You're, you're welcome. Bye bye.